talking about digital marketing, outdated strategies. This used to work when algorithms weren't so smart. We are not spraying and praying and just hoping something sticks. So you have to know your audience first. Facebook actually has to learn a lot longer for it to work. Hashtags will not get you all the way. It's not the thing that's going to get you there. You may bring some people to the party, but they ain't gonna stay for very long. Sometimes you don't actually need some of the platforms. Problem with aware content or transformation aware content. Oh my gosh, they're talking directly to me. 100% tell you that will resonate more with the right person. Hi guys, how are we today? Welcome back to my channel. Um, this is going to be a marketing video for my business. So we're starting with YouTube and we're starting to um, change our strategy a little bit because we love long form content over here. So today we're going to be talking about digital marketing outdated strategies because boy oh boy do I see them so much. So I have five outdated strategies to talk to you about and then possibly a bonus one at the end. Praying and praying. Now this used to work when algorithms weren't so smart but literally putting whatever you think of and putting it out on the internet does not work anymore. Instead it's all about intention intentionality so being super intentional with what you're putting out there, what message you're putting out there. Is it um, is it on brand? Um, does it reflect your values? Does it reflect your core needs? Does it reflect your ideal client? Does it resonate with them? We are not spraying and praying and just hoping something sticks. We do need to actually have a strategy in place dependent on what your outcome or what your desired outcome is. Now, whether that's brand awareness, whether that is a campaign that you're going to run, and you have a certain outcome or KPIs you need to hit for that, that is how you build your strategy. I usually say go from whatever you want and then build backwards, but also make sure that you have your foundations in place because maybe that's not a viable product or service offering or lead magnet for your audience. It always comes back to your audience. So you have to know your audience first and you have to know uh, their key um, pain points and pleasure points and desires and the transformation that they want to have and how you are going to one support that or you are going to be the solution to their problem you need to know that first that all comes with a strategy facebook ads and just diving into facebook ads there used to be a time a few many years ago i would say now um, where if, especially if you were an e-commerce business or, um, anyone really, you could go on Facebook ads and use lookalike audiences and whatnot, and you could pretty much put something together and it would work. Facebook ads is not like that anymore. It is a lot harder. Facebook actually has to learn a lot longer for it to work. Um, that is why I always tend to say if you're setting up your Facebook ads for the first time, make sure you actually talk to a specialist and let them help you out there or really understand the platform first. However, there's no point diving into Facebook ads if, if your organic traffic is not engaging. Like you need to make sure that the messaging is super potent on your organic traffic because they're people that you're reaching already and that it is in your orbit. And if they're not engaging with your content, why in hell do you think other people who um, might not even be as ideal would be engaging with your, with your content there? So if someone came to us and said, we want to do Facebook ads, we actually um, say, well, first we need to actually audit your stuff and make sure that you, we think, that your um, brand is ready for them. Uh, we don't just take anyone on with Facebook ads because one, we want to give them results and we can't promise those results or can't even get close to those results if they're organic um, posts. And when I say organic, I mean like Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, 
the ones that you just post on the platforms, if they're not working, if they're not literally converting there and there and then, or if they're not giving you leads or engaging in any sort of way, uh, we tend to just say, you're not ready for them. I would recommend you looking into a strategy for that first, building your community there, knowing what works, knowing what messaging works really well before going to and investing into Facebook ads. Hashtags will not get you all the way. I think, I mean, yes, there was a question, I think maybe a year ago, where the hashtags are still needed. And I remember when Instagram went from like, 30 hashtags to a set of 10 hashtags instead. Um, however, we still do 30 because, you know, the more the merrier. I think hashtags is a nice bonus. It's a nice tool. It's really good research to think of your keywords and what resonates with your audience. Sometimes your ideal clients aren't searching through hashtags, so they won't be... Um, finding you through that way. So you have to first think about the behavior behavior of your ideal client uh, before even thinking of hashtag strategy or if you're going to invest in that. Um, I would say it's a really, really nice to have, but it's not a starter. And like Facebook ads, it's not the thing that's going to get you there. Because if everything else, like your foundations, your messaging and everything else is crap, um, you're not going to end up getting engagement anyway. You may bring some people to the party, but they ain't going to stay for very long. Aesthetic feed is no longer a thing, people. Um, is it nice? Yes, but if it is the thing that is stopping you from posting or stopping you from putting content out there because you're like, well, this post really isn't a graphic post, although I have to put a graphic post on this post or on the next post, um, just put the post out that you truly believe is going to work. First of all, if it's spraying and praying, then obviously don't. Don't just put stuff out there for the sake of putting stuff out there. But if it's a post that you're like, yeah, no, this is super intentional, um, the caption's amazing, um, there's a great hook, a great like call to action, um, it is in align with my brand and with what my ideal client wants, however it's a reel and not a graphic, then put it out. People, when they're scrolling on Instagram, they scroll Instagram. They don't scroll your profile. The only time someone will go to your profile is one if they're new and they're looking at your profile. They're not going to think, oh my gosh, this is in shambles. <laughs> they will look at the post, especially if they like really want to get to know you and who you are and know if you are the right person to follow. They'll look at your different posts. They won't look at, oh, how pretty your pictures are. I mean, unless you're a photographer, unless you're in the design space, then I would say be more intentional with how you present your posts because that says a lot about your um, your toolkit. Um, but if you're not, don't worry about having a really pretty grid. Like it's all about that message, that hook, that call to action and getting people to follow you through that. Can we stop <laughs> um, thinking um, all the platforms are working in silos? Like they're not. Every platform has its own intention or purpose um, and it's finding how they all mix and match together so when like for instance your your ideal client is seeing you on Facebook or on LinkedIn it's to build authority obviously they you know LinkedIn's are usually to build authority it's usually as a thought leadership platform it's usually to show your business wins and um, what you are doing as a business, whereas Instagram is more like the personal side of it, business personal side, but getting more into the community building side of it because you can go on stories and stories is a really great way to get that no like, and trust factor. So you have to think of the purpose of each platform and then how they work together. Sometimes I say um, don't put the same content on every platform you have because sometimes it just doesn't make sense with the purpose of that platform. Like if one of your platforms is to then push to your lead magnet, like for instance, let's say Pinterest, then that CTA should be that. Whereas if Instagram or your Facebook group is to build a community, then there's that. Or if um, 
really Facebook and Instagram are just used to build your email list or used to build your like Facebook group, then that's their purpose. Obviously, this depends on your business. Sometimes you don't actually need some of the platforms because your ideal client or your purpose doesn't resonate on those platforms or your ideal client doesn't actually even use that platform. There's no point putting your resources and your time and effort and money into a platform if it's not going to do anything. I usually say to my clients, let's choose a couple that make super sense to use and then we can go from there. Uh, we can leverage that audience onto other platforms once we've built this up or once we've tested the messaging, once we know it works. Now, my bonus tip as to something that is super outdated, and I think I said this in like an Instagram post the other day, which um, I will link down in the box below. Content that's like education first. Now, this can make sense for some, especially if they're like, have a really niche idea that nobody knows about and then obviously you're going to have to do some education around it um, to then educate your audience so that they understand what in the heck and bob you are trying to offer. However, when I say let's quit doing education first, I really mean like the what is a virtual assistant? What is an online business manager? What is it this? What is it that? Those posts tend to not do very well. Um, one, because it's a question that not many people probably ask anymore because of the time, the change in times. Like maybe in 2020 when everyone was starting to create their own businesses and they were building digital businesses and businesses from work from home kind of things, this was all quite new. Like it was a new industry. Now a lot of people know it. And we're, we're quite aware of what that is. We know at least a virtual assistant or an online business manager or a digital marketer or what, whatever it may be. But instead, even if you want to use that sort of content, I would hold off on using that content until you resonate with the audience. And so the content that you should actually be putting out first is problem aware content or transformation aware content. This content is one, story driven, two, um, hits key points that will very much resonate with your ideal client and it should, as in if the messaging doesn't work then you have to really look at your messaging to see if it's actually working. But these sort of posts will make your ideal client go, oh my gosh, they're talking directly to me. I feel seen. I feel heard, I feel inspired, empowered, whatever they feel, whatever you're trying to evoke, those type of content works the best. Then your BTS content, so your behind the scenes content and your personal branding content will reinforce that. So they know, for instance, that you know your shit. Then they'll look at your story to see who is this? Who is this person? And then if they can resonate with you as a person, and have that sort of human connection, then that solidifies or consolidates some thoughts in their mind that you may be the right person to help them out. Um, what we, I, what I say to my clients is we want to create content where the ideal client says, where have you been all my life? Like that is the sort of content that we're creating. Once you have them or once you have their attention at least, then you can start asking them questions, figuring out what they really want to know, and that's the stuff that you can educate them on. If you have a product that is super new to the market uh, or an app or something like that, there will be education posts, but do not make it every single post. Really try to think about what your app does and what it solves and how it can be helpful or what your product or what your service insert whatever you need here, 100% tell you that will resonate more with the right person, with the person who's ready to um, commit, to um, um, basically convert. Anyway, I hope that was really helpful um, with the things that I believe are outdated strategies that we no longer do use, uh, employ 
at all. Uh, we have moved away from that. Some may say that's so 2020. Um, now it's 2023 when this was being filmed. Um, yeah. So we have moved away from all of that. I'm pretty sure there is going to be a video of what strategies I would recommend to start using. However, if you cannot wait for that, um, and if you're in dire need of creating marketing that really does resonate with your ideal client, because when it resonates, that's when you can actually create the impact that you're wanting to create in the first place. Uh, give us a holler because that's what we're all about. We're about um, creating marketing that amplifies your purpose, that amplifies your impact. We work with purpose-driven companies and enterprises and organizations. So if it's something that you're looking for or you're struggling with at the moment and you think you need some clarity and direction and a whole blueprint from step to step, then our marketing strategies are pretty much for you. If you don't know if it's for you, still comment below or get in touch. Everything that you need is in the description box below for you. So yeah, have a great day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. 